Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's special feature webinar. My name is Megan Callen, and I'm part of the RAD Responder team at Chambridge Technologies, who's the contractor for the FEMA Seaburn RAD Responder program. These special feature webinars allow us to dive deeper on a particular capability in Seaburn Responder that we wouldn't normally be, be able to cover in one of the new user webinars. The webinar will be recorded and uploaded to the resource library for you to go back and reference at any later time. And just a few quick notes before we start. If you do have a question at any point during the webinar, you can utilize the question box, which allows you to write in your questions at any time. My colleague Christine is on the call and will be monitoring the question box throughout the presentation. And at the end of the presentation, we will unmute the mics for an interactive question and answer session. The Mobile Survey Special Feature Webinar will cover how to create mobile surveys and readings, how to assess them, and how to use the event map to visually see the mobile survey path. Just some background information on mobile surveys. A mobile survey is a collection of radiological readings from a piece of equipment that is in motion, and this is recorded via walking, driving, or flying. Mobile surveys only support gamma and neutron counts. Mobile surveys will be plotted on the event map by following the reading path and will show the severity of the readings through colored segments. And our API is open to any manufacturer for any integration for collecting mobile survey data. So if this is something you're interested in, we will provide you with more information on this at the end of the presentation. So to begin, I'm going to show the ways to create a mobile survey. So there are two ways to create mobile surveys in RAD Responder. The first is to integrate your equipment with our API, and then the surveys and readings will automatically be created. And this is the easiest way for the user. On the other hand, if you do not have integrated equipment, there is a two-step process you must follow. You must first manually create a mobile survey, which I will go over next and then obtain an N42 export of readings from an equipment item, which you can then upload to add readings to the mobile survey. So if you do have an N42 file and need to manually create a mobile survey, you wanna start by navigating to the event space and opening the data tab on the left-hand side navigation menu and select the mobile surveys option. On the mobile surveys page, you will see any existing mobile survey records. And to add a mobile survey, you wanna click the create mobile survey button in the top right hand corner. You will then be brought to the create mobile survey form and you wanna start by filling out the general information section. The next section is the mobile survey information section, and here you must fill out all required fields. The first field is the survey ID, and this is the unique identifier for the mobile survey. This is what will appear on the event map and on the list page, so you wanna make sure it's something you will be able to identify. The next field is the type of mobile survey that is being collected, and this can be either walking, driving, or aerial. And to provide some examples of each, the walking type could be a data collector walking with a backpack that is collecting radiological readings. The driving type could be a vehicle that is recording readings as it is driving. And an example of the aerial type could be a drone collecting information as it is in the air. And in this webinar, I will be using the example of a drone flight path. The next field is the threshold set. 
So there will be a drop down menu where you can select the threshold set that you would like to apply to the mobile survey readings. And the threshold set is how Rad Responder will determine the severity of the segments and colorize them accordingly. And you can hover over that green question mark icon for more information on threshold sets. The final field in this section is the comment field. This is an optional field, but you can put any additional information that you would like here. So to focus on the threshold sets, if you do not already have an existing threshold set you would like to use for the mobile survey data type, you may create one by clicking the Add Threshold Set button. This will take you to the Threshold Set page where you can then create one. And you can have multiple threshold sets for the mobile survey data type. And this is because equipment may be calibrated differently, so the threshold set for one drone may be different than another. And just a note, you must have the event manager role to create a threshold set. If you would like more information on threshold sets, we do have a job aid located in the resource library folder. So if you would like more information on how to create, edit, or manage these, feel free to check this out. The final section on the create form is the attachment section. And here you can add an attachment by clicking the add attachment button. This is not for the mobile survey N42 file. This is only for images or corresponding documents pertaining to the mobile survey. And in case you do forget that, there is a note on this page reminding you to not attach your N42 file here. So once you have entered all the required fields, click the Save Changes button to create the mobile survey. Once you have a mobile survey created, you can now add readings to it. The most common way to add readings is through the Equipment API. And as I mentioned before, equipment that is integrated with the API will create the surveys and readings automatically. So again, this is, makes it much easier for the user. And as I just showed, if you do not have integrated equipment, you will need to follow the steps to create the survey. And then you will use the N42 export from the equipment to upload the readings, which I will show next. And again, our API is open to any manufacturer for any integration for collecting mobile survey data. If you do have the M42 file to import readings with, you want to navigate to the event space and open the data tab on the left-hand side navigation menu and click the mobile surveys option. On the mobile surveys page, you will see the existing records that you have created and click the magnifying glass icon to view the specific mobile survey you would like to import readings to. On the mobile surveys detail page, click the import readings button. You will then be directed to the mobile survey reading import page. To select the import file, click the choose file button. And you will also need to select the time zone for the import date and time. And just a note, the N42 file must be of the 2011 version. We do not support the 2005 version. Once you have chosen the file, click the Upload button to confirm the import. And similar to other imports across our site, if the import is successful, you will see the green completed message.
Once readings have been imported through either the API or N42 files, the general information and reading fields will update based on the location and threshold values. And the mobile survey will update continuously as more readings come in. And this can be through either the equipment API or if you upload more N42 files. So once you have readings in the mobile survey, you can view more detailed information on that survey. So to view and assess the readings, you want to navigate to the mobile surveys list page and click the magnifying glass icon to view the details of the specific mobile survey set. On the mobile surveys detail page, you will see the options to export, delete, edit, import readings, and view the assessment details. Depending on different user roles you have, you may not be able to see some of these options. All user permissions should be able to see the export button, and you can export the readings of the mobile survey as a CSV file, or you can export the survey path as a KML file. To edit and import readings to the mobile survey, you must have at least the data collector role. And to assess the readings, you must have the data assessor role. And we will go over how to assess the data in a later section. If you scroll down on the page, you will also be able to view the details of each individual reading by selecting the magnifying glass or clicking the expand details button. On the mobile reading details page, you will see more specific information on the individual reading, such as location, counts, severity levels, and other more specific fields. On the mobile surveys detail page, you can also view the segments of the path that are on the event map. And you can view these by clicking the magnifying glass. And the segment and group number are corresponding. So group number one is the first segment on the event map and so on and so forth. On the mobile survey segment details page, you will see more specific information for that segment, as well as a list of readings that belong to the segment. And segments are grouped together based off severity and location. So all readings in the segment will be of the same severity and will be recorded close to one another. And we can see a better picture of this when we view the event map. So now we're going to view the mobile surveys on the event map. And this is a great way to view the mobile survey because you can visually see the path of the mobile survey and what areas have different severities. So to navigate to the map, you wanna make sure you're in the event space and open the map tab on the left-hand side navigation menu. If the mobile data layer is not enabled, you want to open the layers menu and toggle the mobile data layer on. Then close the layers menu by clicking on the tab heading and open the mobile data tab to view the mobile survey options. Here you will see all mobile surveys on the event and can enable them individually on the event map. And by default, all mobile surveys will be disabled on the map. You do have the option to enable or disable all mobile surveys by clicking the blue enable all checkbox or the red disable all checkbox.
Once you have enabled a mobile survey path, you can click the navigation icon to redirect the map to the location of where the mobile survey is. Oops. And the mobile survey path will be displayed in segments based on the threshold values and colors. So this is what we were able to see when we viewed the individual segments on the details page. To view the details of a specific segment on the path, click that location on the map and the quick details tab will open. And here you will see specific fields for the segment. So the time range will show the date and time the readings in that segment were recorded. The max gamma and max neutron counts will show the highest gamma and neutron count reading for the segment. The reading counts will show the total number of readings in that segment. The distance will show the distance of just that segment and the severity will show the severity of the segment. To view the details of the entire mobile survey path, you can click either the start or end icon. And this has similar information as did for the segment, but it's for the path as a whole. So the event and type field will show just general information the latest reading will show the date and time of the most recent reading. The reading count shows the total number of readings for the path. The distance is the distance of the path in its entirety. And the max severity is the highest level of severity in the path. If you would like to view more information in the quick details menu, you can click the additional details button to open up a new tab with the mobile survey details. And this will redirect you to the page that we viewed earlier with more information. You can remove the flagged readings from the mobile survey path in bulk by clicking the reject all flagged readings button. The flag readings will still be present on the mobile survey details page and their assessment status will update to rejected, but these readings will no longer be included on the path on the event math. So here's an example of a flag reading. And here you can see a very high reading that does not seem to fit in with the surrounding readings. The record I have highlighted has a gamma count of 100 and the surrounding readings are all in the 50s and 60s. So this was flagged as a suspicious reading. You can also have a reading flagged as having suspicious coordinates and this occurs in the same fashion. So if the coordinates of a reading are very far off from the reading surrounding it, then it will be flagged as a reading with suspicious coordinates. So if you do choose to reject all flag readings from the event map, a modal will appear to ask for confirmation and will show you how many readings will be rejected. So in this case, three flagged readings will be rejected. And to confirm this action, click the reject readings button. The event map will then refresh with the new mobile survey path, which excludes the flagged readings. So here you can see in the blue circle that a reading with a high severity was removed from the path. And you can also see in the pink circle that readings were removed, most likely due to suspicious coordinates. So the path has now kind of evened out. So now I'm going to touch on the mobile survey assessment feature, and this was implemented in the 1.61 release last month. And there is a job aid for more in-depth information about the new assessment features, 
but today I'm just going to focus on the basics of the mobile survey assessment. What makes this different from other data types in Rad Responder is that you can assess the mobile survey as a whole, or you can assess the individual readings. And as previously shown, you can reject flag readings in bulk from the event map, which is the easiest way for the user. And you must have the data assessor role to assess the readings and the survey as a whole. So you can assess mobile survey readings from the mobile survey details page. So you want to make sure you're in the event space and open the data tab on the left-hand side menu and select mobile surveys. You then wanna click the magnifying glass icon to view the details of a specific mobile survey. So to view the assessment details of the entire mobile survey, you can scroll down to that section or click the assessment details button at the top of the page. And this will bring you to the tab titled assessment details. So to assess this record, you must have the data assessor role. If you do not have this role, you can still view the tab, but you will not be able to change or update the status To assess individual readings, scroll to the readings tab, and here you can individually assess each reading, or you can bulk assess through the assessment mode. And again, for more information on assessing data individually or in the bulk assessment mode, you can view the job aid in our resource library. So as I showed before on the event map, you can bulk reject the flagged readings. If you do want to individually reject a reading, you can also do this here from the mobile surveys detail page, and it will also be removed from the path on the event map. You can also change a reading back to approved if you think the flagged reading is actually correct and not suspicious. So if you change it back to approved, it will reappear on the event map. So now I am going to talk about how the mobile surveys and API can work together. So API stands for Application Programming Interface, and this allows two applications to talk to one another. Our API allows detection equipment to talk to CBRM Responder directly. And the implications of this is the user will not have to enter data themselves and specifically for mobile surveys, the reading and surveys were both automatically recorded. And our API is open to any manufacturer for any integration. So specifically for the mobile survey data type, you can integrate with drones, vehicles, and any other equipment item that are collecting data autonomously. And this will increase the efficiency and accuracy of your data collection process. For a list of currently integrated equipment that we have in CBRM Responder, you can navigate to this page. If your organization does already have API connected applications, the API Client Manager can manage the connected applications and can integrate fixed data feeds. In order for organizations to have their equipment work with our API, we do have to enable access to their organization. So that wraps up the basics on mobile surveys and how you can use them to view the path the equipment item took to record the radiological readings as well as showing the severity levels in a visual way on the event map. And it also showed the importance of how integrating your equipment 
can be much more efficient in a real world event. And as always, the slides from today's webinar, as well as the recording, will be available in the CBRM Responder Resource Library and on YouTube. We also do have a mobile surveys job aid that you can find in the resource library. And if you would like to practice working with the mobile survey data type, you can view this event titled Event Map Training Mobile Surveys. And I have uploaded the mobile survey path that I was demonstrating with throughout this presentation. So if you would like to go in and practice assessing the mobile survey or rejecting flagged readings, this event is available for you. And if you would like more information on integrating with our equipment API, please reach out to us at support at seabrimresponder.net. And if you have any other questions in general, you can always reach out to us again at support at or visit our resource library.